Hi, uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Martin. And I'm Dustin Sinos. And we're here to talk to you today about um, some of the struggles and trade-offs we've had at Medium when designing for type. Give you a little bit of context. Medium is an online publishing platform. Uh, you may have seen some of our more popular articles around the web and um, we're going to talk about um, direction versus choice first off. So Medium was founded by Evan Williams who originally founded Twitter and Blogger and there's many many people that publish on Medium. There's amateurs, there's professionals, anyone can sign up and create an account and in that there's a lot of struggles with what we allow people to do and how we allow people to actually uh, enter text on our website. So one major feature of Medium is our editor and you can see on the right this is our composition screen when you're in your desktop browser. We very particularly chose the options that you have when you're in the editor so it's not like a typical word editor where you can see a whole bunch of uh, options across the top of the screen. This only pops up when you've actually highlighted the text and we do a lot of um, fancy things with the editor which I'll show in a little bit. This is the components that we allow you to use in the editor. So the top is our H1 to our H2 to our H3, a quote and our body copy. In that we chose the direction of being very specific about the characters that you can use in the editor. So you can see here Marcin is typing and it will automatically correct uh, prime quotes to cur curly quotes for him while he's typing. If he types in a number it's going to use the proper prime quote. If he types in a space hyphen space, it's going to actually convert that for an M dash for him automatically. Um, it'll actually hang quotes for him as well if the quote starts on the initial line, which you can see here. And we've done this to try to enable the most people to use our editor to actually set very nice type without having to know uh, how to do this. So you can see on the left, this is typically what someone will type in um, without knowing how to do the proper key commands or properly use curly, curly quotes. On the right, this is what Medium will autocorrect. With that, you can see on the far right, we're not being sensitive to different cultures. So the top is German quotes, the middle one is uh, UK uh, full width space n dash full width space and then like a more classic spaced out ellipsis. So yeah, these are some of the challenges we have on the um, on that axis. We also have another thing uh, that we spend a lot of time thinking which is the challenges of craft and versus upkeep. So let me give you an example. A lot of medium people read in their browsers and this is what we saw a couple of months ago when we opened medium on Chrome which is one of the most popular browsers which is those really horrendous thick underlines which you can see which especially if you have a post or a story that has a lot of underlines it just draws a lot of attention to links and we decided we need to redesign them because this is you know we can't tolerate that. So eventually what we arrived at was the thing you see at the bottom which we thought was much, much better underlines and you know much less prominent and, and kind of fit medium very well. But that journey takes us a, lo a long of t lot of time and we started with this building tools. One of the tools we built was just a tool to design a proper underline. So here I can, for example, you know, choose the position, choose the width of the, of the underline, and actually how far should it be from the senders, right? So it could touch them or it could go far away. And at the top you actually see it in situ with 22 pixel fry text, uh, which we use for body font. That was actually one of the easiest parts, you know, getting the underline right. Um, the harder part was taking care of all of the edge cases and all of the different situations when the underlines appear. So this is a regular text. Sometimes it goes through the senders. This is one problem right there. Sometimes it breaks to the next line, which is yet another big technological problem. We have H1s and H2s, which probably deserve their own style of underlines. We have pull quotes. We have uh, image captions. And a lot of those things on medium can also appear on dark backgrounds, which means we cannot just naively reverse it, right? We have to design for white underlines as well. And then there's other browsers. Each browser, as you can see now, natively renders underlines very differently and that's unacceptable to us because we want those underlines to be great under all of the circumstances. So now we have to design all of these underlines for at least four browsers. Some of them on retina displays, some of them on non-retina displays. People read medium on tablets and phones in addition to desktops, so that creates more and more options. And then we also introduced a native iOS app, first from the iPhone, 
which also doesn't use HTML and CSS, so now we have to do it in a completely different environment. And then, right here for Retina and non-Retina, we also had an iPad app. So, same thing happens for iPad and iPad mini, because they come in different sizes. Here's actually a photo of us trying to figure out you know, whether actually iPad mini and iPad should have different font sizes, because they're different physical uh, sizes of the devices. So we could do that, right? We could spend a lot of time designing all of these underlines for all these different situations, all of these permutations. The challenge with that is that A, that's going to take a lot of time to do, and B, later on, it's going to take a lot of effort to maintain. Because none of this is set in stone. We're going to have more devices coming down the road, more browsers, more sorts of different screens. So a lot of challenges is actually now paring it down and thinking, you know, what's the underline we absolutely cannot live without? And that's probably the body text underline. And what are the other things that we can maybe leave off some of the craftsmanship and just, you know, use simple formulas or whatever. So maybe they won't look as great, but at least it's going to be something that won't take weeks and weeks and weeks and, like, full-time job later to maintain because nobody, not one of us does it for, you know, as a full-time job. And then there's the other thing that we care a lot about, which is speed. Both reading your story as fast as possible so it goes, comes down the wire or the, the ether or whatever uh, as quickly as possible, and also that it's rendered or displayed as quickly as possible. Um, we care a lot about actually getting to your story quickly. And here we actually have monitoring on fonts because and this is kind of the, the problem that we have, that more nuanced typography, more font features, more fonts, uh, nice ligatures, all of sorts of open time things, they're gonna that's going to mean they're going to take longer to load. And, you know, if you're on a 3G device or whatever, that's, that's a little bit of a harder problem. Here's one example. Uh, some of you might already see what's wrong with this. This is uh, two sentences in Polish, which happens to be my native tongue. Uh, the diacritics are all messed up because we cannot afford to send a really proper version of the font with all of the diacritics because it's just too big, too expensive, too heavy. Uh, it's too many kilobytes for every user to follow. So... Instead, when we detect language that we don't support some of the characters, we just default to a regular browser font, which is horrible, right, uh, for us. But we need to do it because there's no good solution to do the above yet. And we're working very hard to make it happen so that we could have the cake and eat it too. Actually, a lot of my work sometimes is spreadsheets like this, when font weight could mean a thin, black, or bold font, but it also could mean how big the font is in terms of kilobytes. And those are the kind of calculations we have to do all of the time to make sure we don't generate a page that's just incredibly uh, slow to load. Uh, to the point that one of my biggest accomplishments at Medium was getting rid of one of the fonts, uh, which was Bernino Sun 600, which was used very rarely in only like two or three places in the user interface. And we decided it's better to save the 20 something kilobytes, which multiplied by ten of, tens of millions of users every month means, means actually a lot was better than just preserve this one typographical nuance. And there's also the speed of rendering in on the page. So here's this underline that we maybe we like so much, right? The only way to do the underline in HTML and CSS, you can't just draw the line, because that would be too simple. Uh, the underline is actually a gradient. So you can see now that we take a gradient, which is a CSS feature, and we just make it pretend it's a line which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. This is the only way to do it so we have all of the control we want. And in order to have those spaces around the senders, there's no way to make a space around the senders. What you have to do is draw the text again in the color of the background on top of that line a couple of times to pretend there's a space, which is kind of ridiculous, right? And it kind of works here, you know, if I just do seven characters, it's fast enough and it works really well. Now imagine this in a long, long article with full of links, right? That would be really, really slow. So for example, we couldn't do the descender clearing because we, we feared it's just going to be really, really slow in some of the situations. So this is some of the kind of decisions we have to make on that front. Awesome. Uh, you've heard some of the struggles we've been facing at Medium with trying to get type as absolutely beautiful as possible. And we, we do this because we believe it's important to preserve the richness of typography before web browsers came around. Um, it, it shouldn't be this hard to do this. It's, like, it's ridiculous that we need to multiply type on the page to clear the senders. But we really value that. And we really, because people come to Medium and write, and they're not all 
perfect at type, typography and they don't notice a lot of this. We feel it's very, very important for us to like keep pushing this. So when they publish, oftentimes they don't know exactly why what they're writing feels better or looks better, but they, they tell us that what they love what, they're, what they make on Medium. So it's super important to us. And at Medium, we have like an ongoing checklist of things we want to do. So this was our, our task list maybe about a month ago. And it, it keeps growing. We have a ton, a ton left to do. And it's super exciting because it's like a blend of typography and design and engineering that we can like help figure this out and help try to push, push forward with this. Um, the company we work at gives us the space to do this and to focus on this typography. And we, we feel like it's for a few different reasons that this happens. One being that we're very passionate about typography. We're about four designers and 35 engineers or so, and everyone at the company is very passionate about typography. And Marcin and I and other designers take time to present on things like this, such as you know, the difference between line height and why it used to be called leading, different hyphens, the origins of the ampersand, and even funny things like the zero-width space, which we'll occasionally throw in our apps, and it throws all the engineers off when it throws bugs, but it's quite entertaining for us. Um, we also write. This is an internal version of our publishing platform with articles that we've written to kind of share knowledge about underlines. And most recently on the right, you can see we've properly lined up the left sides of uh, Bernino, which is fantastic. That got shipped a few weeks ago, which made us very happy. Um, we also publish externally. This is an article we wrote about crafting the underlines that Marcin just presented on. And we published this. And much to our surprise, it got 72,000 views. Like, that was amazing to us that people would actually take the time to read something about something as simple as an underline online. Yeah. We also build tools for ourselves to make it, e make it easier for us to experiment with typography. And I wanted to share two of them with you. One is going back to the diacritics and all sorts of things. We actually build tools to see, for example, if I type in Czech or you know, maybe in Finnish, what's the support I'm getting for all these diacritics uh, in all sorts of different versions of, you know, TypeKit, the, the simple character set and rich character set, native fonts and fall, fallback fonts. And I can, you know, even check some of the ligatures or, you know, some of the glyphs. Uh, if you want to do some auto-replacement with nice typography, we can't auto-replace to a character that doesn't exist in a typeface that we support, right? So that's very important for us. And again, this is something that we didn't see existing anywhere. So we thought it would be interesting to build one. We also built a fake medium just to preview typography. So here I have this thing, and we kind of build it as a little bit like a Bloomberg terminal thing. So there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, so I can just point to this and you know change the leading, change the tracking a little bit, you know make the font bigger, uh, italicize it if I want to. Uh, there's all sorts of different shortcuts that are listed here. You know capitalize it if I want. Um, then you know look at how it feels, very quickly preview all sorts of different articles. Maybe it's a bigger article, something much more heavy, and I feel like, oh, this maybe deserves a little bit of a bigger, thicker headline. Here, a poem, a letter, and all sorts of versions maybe of headlines. Um, you know, how would they feel? Uh, very important for us to be very quickly able to kind of preview all of these things. Press space to see how it compares with the current medium. And even if you're so interested, you can take a font just from your desktop and drag it and preview it in the setup here uh, just because, again, we wouldn't do it in production because obviously the licensing is very different, but um, we'll be, we are able to play with it really quickly. And these are some of the tools that we built for ourselves. We're actually really interested in if anybody of you thinks this, this would be interesting tools to have outside. If, if so, please talk to us, and we can definitely open source them or put them up uh, because it's important to give back. And the last part, typography is a lot of fun for us, and that's kind of something we don't want to forget, and we want to also share it within and without the company. So we actually build this dedicated space, uh, which we call the white space, <laughs> and our office for typography. So there's a lot of books, there's um, whiteboards, there's some posters. Um, we have people coming, actually try lettering, which is kind of awesome. Nobody makes anybody do that. And they try to do lettering. Uh, as you can imagine, only black and red pens are allowed in white space. Um, we even had 
uh, our CEO, F. Williams, say, oh, I saw this poster in the Mission, which is one of the neighborhoods in San Francisco. Uh, I thought it would fit well in, in, in white space. So it's kind of cool that, that everybody kind of chips in and gets interested in that. Um, we also have fun in many other ways. This is an internal document. And you know, we had this, this discussion about uh, should strings in our user interface be title case or sentence case? And, and we thought, we're going to nail it. We're going to figure it out once and for all. We're going to you know, take care of all the edge cases and, and, and all sorts of corner cases. And we're going to know exactly when to use which capitalization. We put this, this comprehensive document. Uh, just use sentence case everywhere. That's it. And we thought, you know, it's something that nobody really cares about uh, usually, but we do. And we just said, you know, just go for it. And we're not above bribing people either, which is kind of fun. Uh, in red, you can see circled, there's double spaces, which kind of slipped through our filter. So we offered any engineer who could go through all of the posts in our system and remove those uh, some mochi ice cream. So I think that was actually successful, and they did, which was quite entertaining. <laughs> um, one thing we've noticed is that people are noticing the type changes we've made, which is really fun to see other people in the world notice this. We've been building websites for many years now. and I remember when I first started, no one would really talk about typography on the web because it was so difficult. But now, thanks to Typekit and the modern browsers, we can actually do this. So, you know, sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative, which is wonderful. One of my favorite is Medium spending $1 million developing the perfect underline, which is clearly not true, but that's, <laughs> I, I enjoyed his sarcasm about that. Um, yeah, and, and we, what's really great is to see people from outside Medium talking about typography and criticizing it and sometimes being excited about it. And we also had this internally. Uh, and it's great to see, for example, Jean, one of our engineers, once in a while she just sent me this email saying like, is this quotation right? Is this ellipsis right? And it's just fun to see people who normally don't care about typography do that. And sometimes it leads to actually improvements in typography. And the last thing I wanted to show you was when we started fixing the underlines uh, all of these months ago, uh, you know, I sent my code change to one of the engineers, Jacob, pictured there, and he was like, this is crazy. This is so much CSS. This doesn't make any sense. You're just fixing one line, right? Why are you doing this? And he's completely right. It was a crazy thing to do. It was a lot of code. But throughout the next month, by the way, this is all a side project. We have other jobs uh, to do, not just typography. But throughout this month, he was like helping me make it better and faster and more maintainable to the point that a month later, he was the person who said, hey, you should write a post. Like This was kind of an awesome thing that we did, and we were very proud of it, and we learned a lot. And I think other people could benefit from that or could maybe even improve it further, which is what happened. So he said, we should write about this. And that was kind of an amazing thing. Um, so, yeah, this is all that we wanted to share with you. Uh, please, these are our tweets, um, and we have an email address, typography at medium.com. If you have any thoughts, any comments, any feedback, positive or negative, please <laughs> send it to us. We really do care about that. And uh, we're also going to be around if you want to talk to us about any of the things or anything else. Thank you so much. Thank you.